It was 14 years ago that we needed to expand our pastoral team to care for the life of our church, and we did an exhaustive uh, search far and wide. And there was one name that surfaced to the top, head and shoulders above all the rest, and it was Albert Kim. And uh, uh, we were strangers at that point. We became colleagues. And now we are bonded together as brothers for the rest of our lives. Throughout these 14 years, uh, we have had the blessed privilege of having the fingerprint of Albert. And by the way, when Albert doesn't know this, but when we met Grace, we said, hire the boy. <laughs> that was it. That was all we needed to do was to meet Grace. And then we got with that package, Chloe and Cole. Yeah, amazing. And so for 14 years, Albert came to Tom three months ago and just said, I, I, I think my time on staff is done. Tom met with other leaders and we said, look, this is such a big decision. Let's give Albert a break and then we'll return and we'll, he'll pray and we'll pray. And so that happened. And Albert came back from that break and felt that God was leading him to a new assignment. We could not let him slip out the back door without a proper thank you and a proper release of from us to the Kim family. And so that's what we're doing all weekend. We're going to just honor and bless the investment that Albert and the Kim family have made at CA. So these are the, this is what we're going to do. We're going to applaud, but not yet. Just hang on a minute. And our applause I, I, I will say two things. Number one, thank you, Albert. Thank you, Grace. And Thank you, Cole. Uh, Chloe couldn't be here tonight. But the second thing our applause will say, we're with you. We believe in what God is leading you to. And we release you, Albert, to the next assignment that God has for you in the body of Christ. So, CA, let's do it as only we can do it. Albert, you guys, would you come? Uh, you can be seated, and uh, Albert and Grace and Cole, may, may that applause ring in your souls and stay in your hearts. We honor you. We love you. Albert, um, you've been a joy and a privilege to serve with. As Mark said, we didn't, I didn't know you other than the interviewing process when we first hired you, and and during your time as a Fusion Community Life Pastor and then serving as our Executive Pastor, you've been remarkable. And uh, church, I just want you to know that, you know, 2020 and 2021 was hard on everyone. It was worse on pastors. <laughs> and Albert was stable, steady, 
loving, consistent, prayerful, honorable, every step of the way. I told him this, our church is coming back to life because of his leadership in those couple years, all the years, but those two years were crippling years for all of us, we know. But Albert helped bear the weight for all of us, and uh, we honor you, Albert. And we just wanted to give you a chance to say a few words to the church, whatever you'd want to say. Wow, thank you. I feel honored, and so does Grace Cole. Chloe's at college, so she couldn't be here. She has finals, and I know she would say the same thing. Just want to express our gratitude towards you, and I feel privileged and honored to have been here 14 years. Um, and I only know that well, of course I know that tonight, but Cole's 15, so it's my son, so it's minus one, that's how long I've been at CA, so um, you guys have done such beautiful things for us, and um, to Tom and Mark, they've been honorable and gracious with me, and, and uh, I couldn't say more, and uh, I can't believe, like I'm coming back t- tonight <laughs> from the sabbatical, and, and it's also the last the weekend uh, uh, will be here, but we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for your grace to us, and, and certainly uh, my wife has made a lot of mistakes. I've not made many mistakes during this time, <laughs> so thank you for your grace and forgiveness to her. My son's a teenager, so it doesn't really matter, So, um, but thank you, and uh, we are grateful for this time and, and you, and um, I've learned a lot and I carry with me a lot. I don't know exactly what's next. I know God is leading us to a different season, but um, it's certainly not an easy task to say, um, of course I'm saying thank you, but to say um, (laughs) bye-bye, and I will miss you, we'll we'll love you, and um, God's leading us to a different season, and Tom, thank you for your gratitude toward us, and to Grace and I, and Allison, thank you so much for your love for us. Um, And of course, Mark, I told this to you earlier, but Arlene as well. We couldn't be more grateful for how you've treated us and honored us during this time. Well, we're going to pray. In fact, um, I'm going to invite my wife, Allison, to come up and join us. And uh, Albert Graves, Cole, if you guys could kind of step in here, that would allow Mark and Allison and I to surround you in church. Of course, everybody would love to come and lay hands on them. But as is our, our symbolic action, just to extend your hand as we pray for the Kim family. And so, Lord, first we just say thank you. Every good and perfect gift comes from our Father who is above. And we thank you for the good gift of the Kim family, for Albert, for Grace, for Chloe, for Cole. What a joy that you you brought them to us 14 years ago. And and the joy, the laughter, the tears, the highs, the lows together. Lord, how Albert has served and led people to Christ and deepened people in faith and helped strengthen staff and executed innumerable tasks. Lord, we, we, we thank you for that. And Lord, everything he's done, he's done unto you. I thank you that he's a man of prayer. I thank you that he's a man of laughter and joy. I thank you that he's a man that loves you, loves his family, and loves your bride, the church. So, Lord, now we pray for him, and we pray for the whole Kim family. Protect them from evil, and camp your angels around them. Lord, lead them and guide them, as we know only you, the good shepherd, can do, to whatever's next, but even more than to whatever's next. Lord, lead them closer and closer to you, that they would experience the love, that you have for them. Lord, I pray you would meet them in their times of worry or anxiety or fear or wonder of of where you're leading. I pray, God, that you would meet them in those times. We commission them now, Lord. We bless them now, Lord. And Lord, even more than our blessing, we bless them because we know that you bless them. And so, Lord, we pray that you would bless them and keep them, that you would make your face to shine upon them, And you would give them your peace, both now and always, in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Well, welcome, everybody. Aren't you glad you came to church tonight? 
Uh, we're just so honored that you've joined us. Uh, my name is Ralph. If you're someone who's new or visiting, we encourage you to fill out a connection card. Those are in the seat backs right in front of you. You can grab it now, fill it out, and then drop it into the offering as it comes by in just a few moments. So that really the reason we ask you to do those is so one of our pastors can reach out to you, call you, and extend a very personal uh, welcome and greeting. We also have a new people's table out in the lobby. You can take the card there if you like where we have a nice little welcome gift for you. And also, I want to welcome those who are watching us online. We're just so honored that you are joining us. We are glad that you are here with us. Well, we're very excited about our upcoming Christmas services. Believe it or not, Christmas weekend is next weekend on the 23rd and the 24th, and we're going to have our Christmas candlelight services on Saturday, the 23rd, and Sunday, the 24th. Now, services are going to happen on both sides of the street. Uh, most of you know, if you don't, this is the south side of the street, and the reason it's the south is because we're south of Colorado Boulevard, and we are going to have services on the north side, north of Colorado Boulevard. Both sides of the street, wherever you attend, are going to have live worship and live teaching, and also at every service, our kids' church is going to have for birth through fifth grade, they're going to get to experience a sweet KC Christmas. Now, if you haven't done so already, and I know that most of you have, but if you have yet to fill out an RSVP card, I want to tell you that really does help us to plan. So would you grab an RSVP card? Those are in the seat backs. And on the card, let us know two things, which time you're coming to the service and then which side of the street that you'll be attending. You can also use the card to indicate if you'd like to help us to serve on that weekend. You can serve on our welcome team or our kids church team. And uh, we would love to get a hold of you for that. Now, uh, lastly, the ticket, uh, the ticket, <laughs> I, <laughs> the car, the card is not a ticket. That was in my head. Make sure you say the card is not a ticket. The card is not a ticket. So please, I did that for you, Albert. Uh, so please put it into the offering as that comes by in just a moment, or you can drop it at the new people's table on your way out. Well, brothers, uh, really excited to announce our first men's gathering of 2024. That's going to happen on, yeah, you can be excited about that. A lot to be excited about. January 10th, so just in a few weeks at 7 o'clock, these men's gatherings, if you've never attended, I really want you to come in, uh, in and join me and Tom and Mark uh, and the pastoral team. It's a night of worship. It's hearing a great teaching from God's word uh, at this gathering. We're going to get to hear from Mark. And then it's just a great evening of brotherhood. We're going to close our time together at the gathering out in the courtyard with some donuts and coffee. We're going to send you home all caffeinated. So don't miss out. Mark your calendars. Uh, and then lastly, Perspectives is a 16-week discipleship program that is rooted in scripture and it's really intended to help clarify every believer's calling to co-labor with God in his global mission and purpose. And it's going to be taught by several missional leaders uh, that are very dynamic and they have been out there on the mission field. They have worldwide experience. So join us for that. It's going to be on Monday night starting in January. There is a cost. It's $240 for the 16 weeks, but we have scholarships available for those who are 25 and under. If you can find out more about all these events and more and all the things that are going on here at CA by checking your bulletin or our CA website or our app. Well, this is the time in our service when we pause to worship God with our tithes and with our offerings by giving back to our good and generous God. I want to read a passage to you out of Chronicles. It says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good his faithful love endures forever. So tonight as we give, let's do so thanking God for his goodness and his faithful love. And you can give using the offering bags that will be coming by in just a moment. Or you can give online using our Christian Assembly app or our website. If you're visiting us, uh, I just want to tell you, please don't feel any obligation to participate. We simply want you to be our guests. But to our CA family, thank you so much for your ongoing generosity. We're really grateful. Uh, would you join me one more time in a prayer? Well, Father, we ask uh, 
that you would bless as we give back to you. Bless these tithes and these offerings. Lord, help us to continue to do all the good things that we're doing in Jesus' name. Lord, we want to pray for our upcoming Christmas services next weekend. God, we pray for every invitation that's being extended. We pray, Lord, for every person that will be in this place on Christmas weekend. God, might there be many first-time commitments and recommitments to Jesus. So thank you, Lord, for blessing the work of our hands. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I am glad that you're all here. Love to celebrate Christmas with you. If you're visiting, my name is Matt. Such an honor to have you uh, spend this time with us. I want to welcome those of you on the south side as well. Uh, Glad that we can be joined together as a church on two sides of the street. And I want to welcome anyone joining us online as well. Well, I want to spend this time with you looking at another holy moment surrounding Jesus' birth. A holy moment can also be a scary moment. It was frightening and it was holy, the moment we're going to look at. When was the last time someone or something genuinely frightened you, scared you? Anyone or anything snuck up on you recently and just scared the you-know-what out of you? I'm not naturally a very fearful person. I, I, I don't really have many phobias. I'm not afraid of heights or afraid of public speaking. I, I don't have a whole lot of fears like that. But, but there is one thing. There is one thing that can cause great fear in me and I know that it's it's when a dog a dog I don't know approaches me from behind now I (laughs) I like dogs I like animals in general grew up around a lot of dogs and and animals and Lindsay and I have two dogs at home and uh, if I know a dog if I know the dog's owner normally you know usually that that I'm okay but approaching from behind, that, that, that is my nightmare. <laughs> so the thought of an unfamiliar dog uh, approaching from behind, I, I've had just enough experiences with some dogs that I didn't know and didn't seem to like me very much to make me, if I'm honest, embarrassingly terrified of that. So just this past Tuesday, (laughs) I was walking up Ellenwood right here, just outside, and Tom and I, in fact, have a standing meeting on Tuesday afternoons at 3 o'clock, and oftentimes, instead of meeting in an office, because we've been sitting in meetings all day, we'll go for a walk. We'll walk Tom and I up Ellenwood to Hill Drive, and up and down Hill Drive together on our meeting. So Tom and I were headed up Ellenwood on Tuesday afternoon. I don't remember what we were talking about because (laughs) the next thing I know, we hear behind us barking, and it's getting louder, and we hear the the claws, the the paws, I guess you you call them, but the, the claws on the sidewalk getting louder and louder, and it's, it's my nightmare. And in a moment that was not so holy, but was terrifying, I, I said to Tom, is it behind me? <laughs> and I, I looked to find a full-grown pit bull right at our heels. And... Uh, <laughs> Oh, man, this is when it really got embarrassing. I grabbed onto Tom's shirt. I pulled myself away from that dog, using Tom as a shield. He's going to get his chance to tell this story at some point, I'm sure. And 
Then, still holding on to his shirt, I climbed the retaining wall into somebody's yard. <clears throat> and, and all the while, Tom saying, Let go of my shirt! <laughs> Stop pushing me toward the dog! <laughs> I don't know exactly what happened next. <laughs> For some reason, that dog turned and ran off. And <laughs> thankfully, Tom and I survived and <laughs> laughed hysterically <laughs> as I apologized over and over again for my self-preserving instinct <laughs> to throw Tom to the jaws of death. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. It was terrifying. And maybe the most embarrassing moment I've had in a very long time. Not a very holy moment. But holy moments can sometimes be fearful. In fact, we're told by Luke's Gospel that that was the case on the night that Jesus was born for some shepherds who were out in the field. The story's well-known, part of the Christmas narrative. The words are printed in your bulletin and they'll be on the screen so you can follow along. Luke recorded, in the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields, keeping watch at night over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the city of David, a Savior was born for you who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, peace on earth to people he favors. And when the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, well, let's go see this. Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what's happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off, found Mary and Joseph, and the baby was lying in the manger. And after seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened. And what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart, thought about them often. And the shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. This is a holy moment. A night they would never, ever forget. And it's a story we would not know if those shepherds had not responded the way they did to the angel that night. These shepherds encountered glory and grace, fear and faith, truth and and testimony, and as a result of experiencing those things, new courage got formed in them. I want to keep growing in courage. I, I want that to be a quality that, that keeps getting stronger and, and more consistent in my life. I want courage. Courage for obedience to what God is asking of me. Courage to respond in holy moments that might also be scary moments. I want to look with you at three combinations of what these shepherds experienced that produced courage in the shepherds 
so that we can discover how new courage can get formed in us, okay? So here's the first combination they experience. The first combination is glory and grace. Out in the field that night, there was some glory and there was some grace. The wise men saw a star. Mary and Joseph witnessed the Savior's birth and held in their arms the child who would one day stretch his arms over a cross for the whole world. Just imagine that moment. And the shepherds living out in the field saw the matchless splendor of God light up the night as the glory of the Lord blazed around them. Let's talk about glory for just a minute. You may have heard glory used with fame, as in fame and glory, or you may have heard of glory as a Britney Spears album. Uh, I actually haven't heard the album, but I saw that. None of that quite captures the meaning of glory in the Bible. Glory is the display of something or someone's true greatness. When an athlete shows up with his or her full potential on display, that's glory. When you know the name of a a famous musician, but then you hear the sounds that musician is capable of producing, glory, glory is the truth of how talented that musician actually is on display for us to hear and to witness. The glory of God is God's unrivaled greatness and preeminent majesty on display for us to witness. How holy is the holiness of God? How true is the truth of God? How perfect is His perfection? How complete is His wisdom? How everlasting is His love? The glory of God is God being God on display. It's when we encounter His attributes, the truth of who He is, that's glory. What's what's the glory of God then doing out in a pasture? Why for shepherds? There was nothing glorious about shepherds. Shepherds lived extremely humble lives. In fact, they were really the bottom of their social scene. Shepherds were generally uneducated, usually couldn't read or write, and owned only what they wore or could carry. They had no permanent address. Shepherds lived with their sheep. They weren't just abiding in the field. They lived out there among the sheep. They smelled like sheep. Shepherds weren't welcome in polite society. In fact, they, they, were, they were not even allowed to testify as witnesses in a court of law. Because no one trusted what a shepherd said. They were unwanted, untrusted outcasts. And they would have been the last people to believe that the Savior who was born that night was born for them. Or that the peace that God announced that night was being offered to them. If any of us had witnessed this holy moment, we might think the angel got the wrong coordinates, showed up in the wrong place, talking to the wrong people. And so it's remarkable how many times the message from the angel is made very personal to these shepherds. The angel says, I bring you good news. That's what he says to the shepherds. A child has been born to you. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby lying in a manger. All this 
the angel is making very clear, emphasizing all of this is happening for you. This is how glory gets combined with grace. From the furthest, highest height of heaven to the dirt under the shepherd's feet, God's offer of peace was for the whole world, for all people. God was not content with showing His glory to princes and priests in high towers and great temples. So out in the, t- out in the, the field that night, God gave some outcasts a view into the splendor of heaven. Unmerited, unearned, undeserved front row seats to God's glory and VIP passes to meet the Savior of the world. Glory and grace combined in that holy moment and new courage was formed in those shepherds. Courage to believe what they saw and heard. Courage to receive and believe God's Word for them. Courage to expect what never seemed possible because the splendor of heaven had been shown to them. The favor of God had been announced to them. The hope of the world had come for them. Only by grace do shepherds encounter glory. And that's the first combination in this holy moment that can still produce new courage in you and me today because it is the same God who offers His grace to you and I tonight. The second combination that gave the shepherds new courage in this holy moment is fear and faith first there was glory and grace but the response is fear and faith the shepherds were terribly afraid when the angels of the uh, angel of the lord appear glory shining around them they were not just a little bit afraid they were dog chased (laughs) the old translation said they were sore afraid It, it, it was painful how terrified they were. The Greek can be translated, they feared with mega fear. And graciously, the angel of the Lord said to them, no fear. Now understand that for shepherds, not not getting scared was part of their job description. You couldn't be a shepherd and be afraid of the dark. Shepherds were prepared for the threat of predators seeking to kill, steal, and destroy the sheep under their watch. Shepherds had to fight off wolves and lions and bears and thieves. They often carried staffs and rods and clubs. These guys were armed and ready for a sneak attack. A barking dog approaching from behind at a high speed was nothing for these guys. But in their training and in their experience of protecting and defending their flocks, nothing had prepared them for the angel of the Lord to show up and say what he said. Nothing had prepared them for the glory of the Lord to shine on them. You'll find a baby in a manger. Is that that what the angel said? Really? Did you... Did you hear what I heard? A manger? A a feeding trough. Do you know how crazy I'd have to be to go looking through Bethlehem for a feeding trough with a baby in it? I'd need some new courage for that. I'd need courage to hear God's Word to me like they heard from that angel, and to respond and actually go to look for that. Fear doesn't produce courage. Only fear combined with faith produces courage. Fearful and by faith, the shepherds went searching for the manger. Not next time they were close to Bethlehem, if it wasn't too much trouble. Not with half-hearted kind of curiosity. No, they ran 
to Bethlehem that night? Where, where are you encountering some fear in your life these days? What's, what's scaring you? What opportunity sits before you as unknown? Fear doesn't produce courage. But fear combined with faith will produce the courage you need to go where the Spirit is calling you, to do what you know God is asking you, and to become who the Lord will make of you. God has a funny way of making some unreasonable requests of us. Crazy and courage can sometimes appear very similar. It's going to require faith for your feet to move in that direction. There's fear in the prospect of God restoring a broken home in broken marriages. There's fear in the prospect that God will sustain and strengthen you to achieve what seems out of your reach. There is fear in choosing to stay and wait on the Lord. There is fear in deciding that it's time for change, but fear alone does not produce courage. It must be combined with faith. It takes faith to forgive. It takes faith to start again. It takes faith to do what only God can equip and empower you to do. Faith will carry you where fear never will. And when you combine your fear with faith, new courage, new courage can be formed in you and me. That's the second combination. Here's the third and the last one I want us to look at. It's truth and testimony. Truth and testimony. One of the most profound statements in this amazing story is at the very end where Luke record, records in verse 20. He says, it was just as the angel had told them. It was just as the angel had told them. However startling or astonishing, the angel's message was true. I don't know how they knew where that manger was. That's one of the mysteries in this story to me. There's some theories and wild speculations out there, but Luke doesn't tell us how many stables they visited that night looking for a labor and delivery scene. Somehow, somehow they found that manger just as the angel had said they would. And once it was all confirmed as truth, they had a testimony and they were going to tell it. Talk about go tell it on the mountain. That's, that's what this is right here. That's what that song's about. Remember, they weren't even allowed to testify in a court of law. They were the very last people to be asked to tell anyone what they had seen and heard. They weren't trusted preachers of good news. Uh, they, they weren't, nobody was, was interested in what a shepherd saw in the middle of the night. There was no guarantee that anyone would listen or take them seriously. But Luke says they didn't let the city sleep that night. They had a story to tell. The truth about the Savior gave them a testimony. And when that combination happened, it produced new courage to do what shepherds never did. That's why when you first found and accepted the truth of who Jesus is and what He offers you, you wanted to tell somebody. Some of you couldn't stop talking about it. It's only after time passes and the truth of Jesus becomes a given in your past do we stop talking about it. Only when you forget the deep and abiding love of Jesus that is still for you today. Only when you stop looking for glory to still shine and grace to still sustain you. 
Only when peace with God and new life in the Spirit of God becomes old news instead of good news do we stop talking about it. Can the truth of Christmas captivate you again? Can the truth of what God's Word says about you restore joy in you again? Can the truth of the Savior born for you, for you, still give you a new testimony of what God still has in store and offers you and your family and your friends and our church and our city? What testimonies of, of what we might see and what we might hear from the truth of what God has in store for us are yet to be told. Several years ago, I visited the home of some people who were new to our church. I met these people in a baptism class, and they had brought a friend who was curious about Jesus and wanted to understand more of what Jesus is all about. And so I planned to visit this family at their home and, and to talk more with that friend. Well, when I arrived at the, the house, there was a little gate across the entrance of the front door, and behind that gate there was a dog. And he started barking as soon as I pulled along the curb. I thought, oh Lord, here we go. Sure enough, someone came to the door and picked up the dog, took it to a bedroom down this long hall, and then I went into the house, visited with the family for a while, and that friend of theirs arrived, and we decided to... Uh, we, we were going to sit and talk outside in the front, uh, in front of their house. And so we were headed towards the front door when I heard another door open. <laughs> Wham! And I heard that familiar scrabble of the dog's feet as it gained speed down that hallway. And I knew it was headed right for me. <laughs> and I got to that door, and I, mean, I, I was almost over that gate. I went to jump over that gate when, bam, that dog got me right in the back of the leg, right on the back of the thigh. I can still feel the pain. <laughs> I jumped over that gate, and that woman said, do you need a Band-Aid or something? <laughs> I needed a tetanus shot. <clears throat> but I said, no, no, just come on, let's just sit out here and talk about God's love for you. <laughs> and I, I wasn't going to let a dog bite keep me from telling this woman about Jesus. So we talked for a long time. And with tears in her eyes, and in an honest prayer, she received her Savior. The truth of Jesus is a testimony that must be told. And I can testify that the pain of a dog bite is nothing compared to the joy of seeing someone else receive their Savior. This time of year, you and I will pass by people who are more open than usual to receive the truth of Jesus. You and I know people who will be lonely, who will be searching for meaning, searching for something to satisfy the hole in their lives that only God can fill. And if the truth of Jesus has become your testimony of new life, then you've got a story to tell that must be told. And trust God. Trust Him to give you new courage to tell others what Jesus still offers us all today. 
Now's the time to share the good news of great joy that God has made known to you. Now is the time to make that invitation. In fact, I was thinking about those RSVP cards that we've been talking about, and it it occurred to me that filling that out and putting the number of guests, that little line that says how many guests will be joining you, filling that little piece out, that might be one of the most courageous acts of faith for you all year to say God I'm going to trust and believe I'm going to invite my friend my brother my sister my neighbor whoever it is I'm going to I'm going to believe today that they're going to come next weekend to hear about you trust God for new courage to combine the truth of God's Word with a willingness to tell your testimony or to at least invite someone to come and hear the message of Jesus that can change their life. Alex, wherever you are, if you'll join me. Here's here's what I know about me. Apart from the grace of God, I'd be a self-centered insecure, prideful fool. But God loves me. And God loves me too much to leave me alone the way that I am. His good news of great joy for all the people is for me too. My Savior lives. His words are true. His love is true. His grace is true. His power is true. And it's all for you. The Savior of the world is born for you. The report that it happened is written in God's Word for you. You can still find your Savior not lying in a manger and not buried in a tomb. He is with you with you in your prayers, with you while you're waiting, with you before you even know His love for you. His forgiveness of sin is complete. His offer of peace through Jesus is His promise of new life for you. It's all true. And it's all still for you and for me. The astonishing, stunning, mind-blowing, wonderful truth told by the shepherds that night in Bethlehem is still being told. It is still the message of hope that goes out all over the world changing lives. It's the message that changed my life and keeps changing my life. It's the message of hope that keeps changing your life and if, it, if you've never trusted it before, can change your life today from the splendor of heaven that lit up the field that night the savior who was found just just as it was told he would be still offers his grace in our time he is glorious and by grace he came for you if you trust him faith will carry you where Fear never will. And the truth of God's Word will become a testimony to bring hope to others. That's how new courage gets formed in you and me. May it be so. May it be so, Lord. This Christmas, may we receive new courage to glorify God and to praise His holy name. Let's pray before we praise His name. Father, You're with us. You are the God who is with us. Not because we're in a church. Not because of who we are, but because of who You are, God. You are the God who is with us. I thank You for knowing us. 
knowing our need for You. God, I pray for those who are with me right now, who are intrigued, who are curious about Your glory, but they need to receive Your grace. God, I pray that by Your Spirit that they would be drawn nearer and nearer and nearer to You. That by grace they would find themselves found by You right now. Found in Your love. And if you've never responded to the love of Jesus before, with a personal profession of faith. You can do that right now. You can just say to Him, I believe. Jesus, I believe. I believe that You are the Savior who was announced that night. Jesus, I believe You're my Savior. I receive You. Forgive me for the life I've lived without You. And help me to live a new life with You. In Jesus' name. And if you've prayed that prayer, His grace abounds bounds to you. If you prayed that prayer, there's a new path out before you to walk with your Savior. And I want to pray for those who are here with me right now, Lord, who they, they've got something frightening before them. They've got a reason for fear. And I ask God, would you give us faith? Lord, would you help us believe just just a little more today? Can we believe a little more today, God? That we might choose to walk again and again and again into the promises that you have made to us. Help us, Lord, to approach what could be fearful with faith. And God, I pray, Lord, all over this room, all throughout this space, those hearing online, Lord, those hearing my voice right now, God, I pray for Your truth, the truth of Your Word to become our truth so that we might be compelled by how Your truth has changed us, how Your truth has restored us, how Your truth has made us new to tell that story. Let it be told. Let it be told over and over and over and over again because it is the hope of all the world. And so God, we give You glory. We thank You for what You offer each one of us. It's Your name we lift up and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen.